children with dyspraxia often have other developmental disorders. It's very common. So all of these things overlap, dyspraxia, dyslexia, ADHD, autism spectrum disorder, specific language impairment. They overlap. They're sometimes called comorbid, which is an awful term, or co-occurring. The point is that if you get a child who's got one difficulty, you may have other bits stuck to your child as well. So they may have some coordination, a bit of attention problems, or attention problems, a bit of reading problems, a bit of reading problems, and a bit of language problems. Um, and there's lots of evidence to show that overlap. So it means that if you have a child who's got some difficulties, we've got to really think about that whole child. And that's, parents often say they go from place to place to place to place to know what is it my child's got. Somebody says they've got dyspraxia, and somebody else says they've got dyslexia, and somebody else says they've got ADHD. And it seems to be really confusing. And it may well be that the most dominant sign or symptom is the one that your, the diagnosis your child gets. And that might be because of circumstances that you don't get diagnosed till your a child is seven with dyslexia because they're not learning to read before that. So people wouldn't know they couldn't read before that. A child who's not um, speaking as clearly or is delayed in their language might be picked up earlier because all the other kids are starting to talk around two and your child might be delayed. So the primary symptom might be the diagnosis your child first gets. And as they grow older, it's a bit like sort of a bobbing thing that one goes under, another goes up, depending on the external demands. And what that means is that it's important to look at your child's needs, the, the whole child. It's a bit like me looking at feet and not looking at elbows or shoulders. Um, I might be putting uh, bunion treatment, dealing with the bunions, but it's acne your child's got, because we haven't looked at the whole point. We're doing the right thing, but the wrong place. Really important to look at that whole child and to see what your child's needs are. And the dominant thing for your child is to feel um, supported and have good self-esteem and um, to feel that they've got strengths and to seek out those strengths in your children and to harness those strengths and to find ways around some of the difficulties. Uh, I'm short, so what do I do? I wear heels, I lower the level of my cupboards, I make sure that my desk is at the right height. I change the environment to suit me so I can work in the environment that I'm in. And the same goes for your kids, is that if they're not good at rugby, it doesn't mean that they have to keep trying to be a rugby player, but they could be a great swimmer, or they could be really good at martial arts, or they might be very creative with photography. And it's seeking out those strengths, because often that's the area that your child will end up going to as a hobby, or even a career or for employment. And that's really important. So this overlapping picture means you need to have a good understanding of the strengths and difficulties but then to maintain that child's self-esteem and find the environment that supports your child and not child, fit your child into that environment that doesn't suit them.